favor, but they probably don't spell out the specific relationship. So let's go to networks. Okay. Given here in this tab, it groups your genes based on these biological relationships. So that, again, these are the associations. So say all these individuals work in the same auto body shop. What are the odds that they were around the bank when it was robbed? Oh, and these two are, you know, relatives of somebody in the auto body shop. By the way, I don't mean to imply that if you work at a body shop, you're also a bank robber. So it's just an example that I use. Okay, so they're grouped by scores. So the higher the score, the less likely that you would find all these individuals or all these genes with this relationship. So we can click on that. All right. So now we're getting, now this is a different gang. Look at this individual here. Trim 28. Look how many connections it makes. This is a potential godfather. If it's not a godfather, it's a potential uh, wise guy. No, the wise guys are kind of smaller. What's the capo? This is probably a capo is what this is because he was caught. He was in the crime, but look how many, you know, look how many wise guys he commands. Yeah. So this is probably, you know, this is, you know, a lieutenant in the, in the maf crime mafia family, but probably not the godfather. Here's what we can, here's what a godfather looks like. So we can do this, and that's kind of what you do is, you know, look through here. We can color this any way we want. We can actually put in, so if I go overlay the sub middle button here, I can put in molecular activity predictor. So based on the activity and what we know about these genes, let's see what these relationships are. And this will give you it here. So not a whole bunch coming out. But you can see, right, ooh. This thing is supposed to induce this thing, and this one's supposed to induce that. And it looks like part of it's going up. RNA polymerase is down, that's for sure. But watch what we can do now. I can add people to this gang. Say I already know the godfather, right? And I know you've been playing around with this condor, which I think is awesome. Um, P53 is very important in uh, cancer, right? Mm -hmm. Say I want to test whether P53 is controlling any of my gangsters in my network that I just created. Here's how you do it. Remember, this is going to be, this will be on uh, YouTube, so you can go back to this. Here's what you do is you go to this function called build. Okay? So on the left, I go down to add molecule relationship. And you can do this any way you want. So I can pick this biological, I could just pick anything because I'm going to tell it what it is. So I just click on one of these and I just put something here. Now what I do is I double click on it. Now it's saying, what do you want this to be? I can make this any gene, any chemical I want. But in this case, I'm going to make it TP53. That's the official gene symbol. Go search. Okay, there's a lot of things that have P53 in it. So I want to select the one that just says TP53. There it is, right here. Select. I hit OK. Now this little circle has all the background of P53. Now what I'm going to say is I want you to connect this thing that I just added to anything in my network. So I'm going to go connect. And we can do grow too. And I'll, I'll show you that later. Grow function is just amazing. Okay, and here's where you say, okay, do you want indirect, direct? What kind of relationships? I'm just going to go with a standard default and I'm going to hit apply. Do you think it's going to make any connections in our network? No. No? <laughs> I already did it. It does. Look at that. So this is where... This is all the places that P53 is known to interact with in our network. Not only that, but it also told us, based on what it's connected to, what P53 is doing. What does blue indicate in this network? Inhibition, Inhibition right? 
P53 is like the cop in your cell, right? This is like the big main cop and it like puts every, you know, keeps everything in check. This is going down as lung cancer gets worse. This makes sense. This is exactly what you do is that bioinformatics isn't just about collecting numbers and polishing them over and over. It's doing something with it. It's using your own head to determine whether any of this makes sense. Okay, so this is networks, yes. So then with this step, could you potentially use that, say you have someone else's data set and they have a, a gene that they have like strong correlations with in their data, could you add that and see if it does totally. on your network? Yep. Here's what I usually do is I'll just take, I'll, I'll do them both independently and then look at them together. And I'll show you that because I did that with all our lists. I promise you guys get to work on your, uh, your data sets tomorrow. Um, okay, so I got into networks, Godfathers, right? We haven't looked at Godfathers yet. Okay, here are our Godfathers. All here. And this gives you everything. This gives you genes. This gives you drugs. It gives you microRNAs. Anything you want that has targets in the literature that this database has surveyed, it'll show up. Again, look, P53. Look how many things P53 is connected to. 83 out of 1,000 are known to be somehow connected to P53. Okay? Oh, this ERB2. I see this all the time. This is important in lung cancer. And again, it's, it's known to associate with 42 different things. So given here are your upstream regulators. If you measured it directly, it'll be here. So we don't measure any of this stuff. We just know it's probably playing a role given the fact that we have so many targets. So here are all the targets of all those genes, right? And I can click on this and this will give me all the genes that are known to be associated with that. And you can make lists out of this as well. This is what I want you to see is that as you do the bioinformatics, you go from big to small to smaller to big to small, we can make little subsets and that's kind of what you want to do is just kind of jump around levels you know do this for a while something will click trust me we can group it by so this is the predicted activation state so the bigger the number the more active <laughs> hydrogen peroxide this is the highest one i know yeah there's some oxidative damage going on that's for sure yeah totally but look at this, TGF beta 1. This, I see this thing all the time. This plays a huge role in lungs. It's predicted to be more active. And it also interacts with 81 genes in our gene list. This is a godfather. This is a mean active godfather. So we can go display as a network. And it's going to look like that interleukin thing. So in the middle here, little old TGF beta, right? In the middle... It interacts with all of these genes in your gene list. All, anything colored was in my original 1,000. Not only that, but the way these genes are going and what we know about TGAF or TGF beta, it's suggesting that TGF beta is much more active just based on its effect of its target genes. Does everybody understand that part? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see with some godfathers that were less active. So basically, these if it's more active, what is it telling you about lung cancer and its relationship with lung cancer? Is it, what's that? Stronger, right? That these things are probably helping the tumors. VEGF, this is a huge, huge in uh, giving blood supply to tumors. This is way up. Everything here makes sense. You know, this is what you want to look at, FOX01. Uh, trans, or tumor necrosis factor. You know, even it sounds bad. It sure is. Now let's look at some of the things that were inhibited. We can sort this way. Richter. I see this a lot. Uh, resveratrol. Anybody heard of resveratrol? Yeah? What, 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 what have you heard about it? So this is this chemical in red wine that is supposed to help you live longer, number one. Number two, it's supposed to prevent cancer. Look at it. It's going down. 
it's known to interact with nine things in our expression array set, and it's all and all those things are behaving like you have less resveratrol. So basically, if you wanted to maybe you know add you know if I had somebody with lung cancer, I would say. Why don't you go drink a bunch of red wine? Or no, I wouldn't say drink a bunch of red wine. I would say go get resveratrol because they have it as supplement form, and maybe you should take this, you know, with your lung cancer. This allows us to do this. Like we went from numbers, and now we've got like chemicals we can give lung cancer patients. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Like I saw. If if you know somebody who's a smoker, tell them to take vitamin D. Serious. Like no joke there. Like I see so many things that vitamin D are known to induce that go down when you develop these lung tumors, you know, but this is where we get, this is how we get to, you know, potential therapies. Retinoblastoma is down. That's a huge tumor suppressor. Let's seven. I see this a lot as well. But again, what we can also do is now we can take, remember that last slide where we did the Gambino family. Now we can take some of these things and mate neck works out of them. So let's look at the TGF beta. If you go over to this column here, this is going to be important for you guys. If I click on this, so what this does is it takes all the godfathers and now starts making networks out of them. This right here is a skeleton to lung cancer tumor development, right here. This is important. These are how lung tumors form. These are the godfathers that makes that happen. And not a lot of people know about it because usually they're invisible. We saw them. You know, we took some flour and kind of threw it in the air and it like covered that individual figure. And we go, aha, I know you're here. This is what we're doing. And right now, not a lot of people do what I do. They, they're not able to do this. Even though they have the software available, they still don't get this. You get this, you're going to have an advantage over just about any scientist out there because not a lot of them do this. Okay. Let me show you one more thing about IPA. Well, actually, I'll show you on this one. You can go to these regulatory effects. So what this does is it takes those godfathers and then takes their criminal history and combines the two. You're going to watch. This is awesome. So here's the top regulatory network that was produced. I'll show you how this works. Okay. So here is a regulatory network. Here are our godfathers up here. These are our upstream regulators. They're all known to interact with these genes, and these genes are associated with a particular criminal activity. Cell viability of prostate cancer cell lines. Cell viability of brain cancer cell lines. Right? What are we looking at? Lung cancer. And lung cancer is getting worse. Viability makes cancers survive. This is totally in what we're doing. Given this fact that there's so many godfathers and so many criminal activities in common with these genes, I would say these genes are important because they have lots of connections. Not only do they have a criminal history, but they're taking orders from the same boss. This would be something I would look at. And, uh, you know, honestly, these are all like the rock stars of uh, uh, lung cancer. Rela 6, STAT 3. You know, they all have specific functions. And what you would do is you can go and look up some of these. And again, we can double click on it. And you'll get a molecular summary. You can basically Google it. The thing is, is, is to dig deeper. Do not expect the computer to give you an answer. Okay? Because there are lots of answers. I guess what I'm trying to tell you is that this is a story and that you have to understand the story and you just kind of have to pick up maybe a main character or a chapter to kind of focus on. But realize that that's not the entire story. It's a big story. And this software helps you kind of decode it, if you will. Okay, so here's what you can do is we can now do, and this is what you should do when you start getting those gene lists in. And this is kind of where I figured out Condor, I think,